On our agenda is um, approval of the minutes of the regular meeting of June 22. Move approval. Second. All those in favor? Any Aye. objections or changes? Right. Uh, first item uh, for action on the agenda is the approval of the agreement with Burns and McDonald for evaluation of the Evanston Waterworks property. And this, this is an engineer evaluation with all the details having to do with going forward. Okay, any discussion on this? Do we need um, presentation of any kind? No, I'm just asking, where are the bills listed? Yeah. I mean, where are the bills and the payroll? But that's not on here. Right. You're right, it's not. Okay. I thought, I thought we were moving fast. <laughs> I thought we were moving fast. Um, let's handle this and then we'll go to the bills. I know, but it's always there. We need it on we need it on our blue sheet because it's part of our agenda. All right. Um, any discussion or presentation from the committee? A speaker on this matter? Okay. But let me just see if anybody up here has come on up, Carl. Anybody have any questions about this? This is a continuing um, a repeat for all right. Um, any staff want to make any kind of presentation? Hearing none. All right, Carl, go ahead. Uh, Carl Bova, 1322 Rosalie Street. Uh, regarding the uh, uh, water works valuation project, uh, valuation of the water works is a great example of a planned expenditure by a reputable third party consultant that will provide the city with a very defensible position with respect to both the execution of current water sales agreements and future agreements. Its purpose basically is to capture as fair a cost distribution as possible for the citizens of Evanston. I heartily endorse it. Please approve it. Thank you, Carl. Um, and do you want to add anything, Kevin, to this or no? Um, Madam Chair, members of the committee, Kevin Lucas, Water Production Superintendent. Uh, utilities department. No, there's really nothing to add. I mean, we, we have to do this every five years per the contract with the Northwest Commission. This year, in anticipation of a renewal of the contract with Skokie, going back to this type of methodology, we wanted to begin and get the transmission assets um, and general assets you know, established as well. Right. Do you want to just give us just a brief sentence or two about the activity in the other suburbs regarding our water? sale um, efforts? We have, uh, we have read now that Morton Grove and Niles are moving forward to negotiate with us. That's been a, uh, was in a press release. Right. Uh, Mr. Stoneback, Director Stoneback and Assistant City Manager Lyons are in uh, Park Ridge this evening. Um, and we don't know where they're going to fall just yet, but we're hopeful. Um, we have not heard again from Lincolnwood. I think they're trying to determine if they can get a better rate by waiting. Um, but we pretty much gave them our last and final offer, and we will stick to that. And that's about it. Everything looks positive at this point in time, though. I think people need to hear that. The, mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. Mr. Bova spoke positively, and now you. It's Thank you. It's going to be our lucky night. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Mm -hmm. Okay, all those in favor of recommending to the council a 3.1, the agreement with uh, Burns and McDonald. Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Alderman Braithwaite. Oh, let's do the bills. bills. You want to do bills? Yeah. Okay. Do you want me to move the bills? Yeah. The, uh, it's on the um, it's payroll and on bills. The yellow agenda. Uh, Madam Chair, I'd like to move uh, item A1, City of Evanston payroll through June 14, 2015, an amount of two two million eight hundred seventy-eight thousand thirty-one and ninety cents. And also two thousand nine hundred thousand forty-six four hundred thirteen and sixty-five cents. And the bills? Oh, uh, bills for three million three hundred twenty-seven thousand sixty-three and twenty-eight cents, and credit card activity for the period of May thirty-first, twenty fifteen, of uh, one hundred forty-two nine hundred fifteen and thirty-three cents. Second. Second. Any um, discussion about any of the bill's questions or any other questions that anybody might have? No? no? Okay. Hearing none. All those in favor of the four items having to do with uh, payroll, bills, and credit card activity, say aye. Aye. 
Any opposed? Uh, Alderman Miller, A3.2. Move approval of a contract with A-Lamp Concrete Contractors. This is for Central Street Streetscapes Improvements in the amount of $1,100,477.40. Okay. Any opposed? Um, could I have a little more information about this vault and what are the expenditures directly related to the vault? I was having a little, I know of another vault in town in an alley, but are we filling this in? What, what are we doing? It's not on. <clears throat> Good evening. Madam Chair and members of the committee, yes. Uh, this is the, the wall that is existing um, between Prairie to Prairie on the north side. The plan is to go ahead and um, construct a retaining wall at the property line and then let the cure the wall and then fill in the vault with the gravel. So when once we have the gravel base, then we can install the new sidewalk. Okay. Uh, Okay. It is, what is the, it, this is added cost to the project, right? There's the only way the sidewalk can be replaced. No, I, under th I understand that, but what is the additional cost because this vault is there? Do you know offhand? If you just replace the, just the sidewalk would cost around, you know, you are just on the existing ground, you, are, you take out the old walk and replace the new walk. So there is no cost associated with the building the uh, retaining wall and filling it in. So, if we were to just uh, do just the sidewalk would cost around 100,000, this would probably add additional 200 to 250,000 because of constructing the wall, the wall, the retaining wall, and filling in the vault. And also try to maintain the pedestrian access during the entire uh, uh, length of the construction and without, you know, and also this is on Central Street, which is a uh, IDOT route, so we need to maintain the traffic to certain standards as well, so. Thank you. Alderman Grover and then Alderman Holmes. I think it was probably four years ago that Mr. Nagar, Mr. Rajiv, and I toured underneath. We went into the buildings and toured underneath the sidewalks there. You really, you can walk for, at least one of those buildings, 1927, 1929 Central Street, walk under the sidewalk itself, and the, the businesses there were using the space for storage, but they were leaking, and it was, and it, it, because it's vaulted, the sidewalk cannot be maintained very well because it's just uncertain. It's a really interesting project. Can you, um, Mr. Nagar, while we have you, help us understand why it seems as if so many of our projects, the engineer's estimate is is under what ultimately is the bid price for a lot of these contracts. It seems to be a a seller's market, not a buyer's market. That is uh, one of the options. The other thing would be to earlier we bid the projects in the year would be definitely a better option. So if we can move the you know the bidding process to December, January, or early. February, then you have uh, more contractors. When the contractors have the projects, actually they would like to, you know, try to increase the uh, their um, profit margin as well and bids come in higher. And also this year has been totally different with the tollway has more than billion dollars worth of uh, contracts mm -hmm. in which all the underground and most of the contractors have the projects. So then once they have the projects to keep their uh, people busy, they try to you know go for a much higher profit margin than just to keep the people busy. So well, it's then the following question is why don't we wait and bid this in the um, later in the year? Is this something that has to be done this summer? Yes, because of the vault, we cannot. There's already the vault is leaking, as Alderman Grover said. There's a lot of water going down there, and it has to be done in summer, not in the winter months. Okay. But we could have we could have bid it in the winter to do it now, but we didn't, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Director Robinson, did you want to? Uh, Alderman Holmes and Director Robinson. No. No. I didn't say anything. you didn't put on your light. I think that was Alderman Grover's light. No. Oh, it, when did you turn the lights on? Oh, I turned the lights on for you. That's all <laughs> because they weren't working. Oh, I see. Okay. All right. Um, anything else on this? No. All right, all those in favor of recommending this to the council, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, Alderman Grover. I move A3.3, which is our approval of a contract with LNR Construction for the Baker Park renovation project in the amount of $494,269. Second. Okay, 
Any discussion on this? Any comments? Hearing none, all those in favor of recommending to the council, say aye. 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 I'm, I move approval of A3.4, um, approval of a contract with Public Financial Management for Financial Advisor Services in the amount of $20,000 per year to provide financial advice advisory service to uh, with additional fees for non-standard bond issuance of 12.5 million the community center and two and 250 million treatment plant Second. all right any discussion hearing none all those in favor say aye aye, aye. any opposed um, I'll take the next one approval of a contract for the parking access and revenue control system with automated parking technologies LLC this is in the amount of uh, not to exceed amount of a million three hundred thirty nine thousand eight hundred forty seven dollars okay um, I have a question I saw in the specs where this technology will either improve or allow for uh, card in, credit card out will this technology allow you to avoid the parking little uh, ticket and just stick your credit card in when you go in and stick it in when you go out and because you could do that you can do that at the Sherman Plaza garage I think just use your credit card uh, Eric Risch, Automated Parking Technologies. The proposal we put together and how the specification was written for this project was ticket in, credit card out. So we are only offering credit card payment at exit Why? in this solution. Why? 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 Do you know how 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 easy it is to use a credit card going in and coming out? You put the credit card in the machine, and you know, it just makes so much sense. Anyway. Why, I mean, why is that technology in one of our garages and not here? It, it is available. It, it's an option that we could. This little tweak, how much could it cost? Um, 29 cents? <laughs> <laughs> Be a bit I mean, more it's than a that. little teeny tweak. A bit more than that. I think, I think it would be a fabulous um, service. Maybe that's something we can look into for the next. Maybe that's something we can look into for the next center. For the next time, this is this is a long. Madam term. Chair. Yes, sir. Uh, we'd be happy if the committee would like to hold it. We could come back with the answer to that question. I'm, I'm not interested in holding it. I, I want to move on and get this going. Well, we, we 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 wouldn't be able to get a dollar amount here on at the meeting this evening. We would need to come back to you. So. Well, I mean, if it doesn't provide it, it doesn't. But it's not cheap, and I just thought that would be just one more convenience. I mean, everybody loves the parking meters where you put the credit and card. And Alderman Rainey, I'm happy. I've asked Mr. Voss if he thought that waiting two weeks was going to be a significant issue. He indicated that it's not. So uh, I guess it would be my recommendation if we could just hold it, we'll get you the answer to the question. You're absolutely right. Could this is something we're going to have for a long time. Two more weeks isn't going to hurt anything. Do we Do we have, I mean, if it's going to cost another $500,000, let us not do it. But is it going to be like I don't like think 10, the order of magnitude is that. Can you give us some idea? Well, let's just hold it, and then well, we'll find out. Madam Chair, it's not okay. going to matter, right. so right. it doesn't. Right. Right. Madam Chair, members so. of the committee, Ricky Voss, Administrative Services. I just consulted with Mr. Reish, and he thinks that the figure to add the additional would be around forty to forty-five thousand. It's a lot to the project. Yeah, it's a lot. All right. Um, okay. I think we, we should just hold it. Huh? Yeah, we just That's hold it, and okay. it's two weeks won't we'll matter. Right. So let's just do right. it. As long as you're telling me it's not going to screw anything up. It's not going to no. screw anything okay. up. Okay. All right. All right. Let's just hold it, and I'll explain to the council mm -hmm. what we're doing. All right. Yep. Alderman Bray. Uh, Madam Chair, I'd like to move item A4, uh, approval of recommendation to proceed with the Church Street boat ramp improvement. Uh, staff recommends City Council authorize the City staff to proceed with the construction and uh, construction administration of the uh, Church Street boat ramp. And the funding will be uh, f uh, from fiscal year 2015 from the Parks Contingency Account. Uh, and it's also important to note that I guess this is uh, the Illinois Department Resources Grant of 200000 That's for action. We're not getting it. In place of. In, in place, place of. of. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Um, Correction. Second. Okay. 
Um, Alderman Miller, I'm sorry, just saw your light was oh, on. Yeah, no, was no, it's on this one. This one? This one. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, right. So there's been a second here? Not yeah. second. Okay. I'll be second. Just a quick question with the loss of the IDNR grant, uh, what's the effect on the improvement plan in general? Are we bumping other projects? I don't know who can answer this. Do it in January. Alderman Miller, members of the committee, uh, we're comfortable with this adjustment. Um, Director Robinson and I were just talking, however, um, you know, there's more to come. Uh, from the state. Uh, IDOT is informing us that uh, uh, funds will be, are going to be held while there is no state budget. Uh, there are other issues out there, uh, but you've already awarded the contract for this work. We feel it's important to move forward. The funds are available to do that. Uh, that's not to say we won't be back in two weeks or a month with perhaps some other adjustments we will need to make in order to move forward. We just don't know. Sure. No, I'm just wondering, is is this going to, and you don't know, I, I understand that too, but was there something proposed that, that we were going to you know, use this money for that we now can't do? Well, at this point in the year, we're six months in. We, we're at this point of starting to make adjustments of projects that were budgeted that perhaps will not be uh, be worked on or expended completely. So again, we feel comfortable with this 200000 but we very well may be back to you in two weeks, four weeks, six weeks with other adjustments, which may have a greater impact. Right. So, so right now, it's just up in the air about what's not going to be funded this year. In but but, but okay. at this point, we feel comfortable with this project making this reallocation. Okay, thanks. That's about right. Have we gotten notice of any other projects that require state funds that are in jeopardy, Director um, Or that the funding's in jeopardy, not that the project is? Yes. The, um, the IDOT projects that we have, anything that is funded by um, DNR, so uh, LAD PATH is on hold for right now because that's an IDOT grant that um, we've received. So what we think if a budget is passed, um, depending on how late in the construction season that happens, Dodge, the Dodge back protected bike lane is impacted. Um, so um, it may move projects to the spring or into next year. Is this the first one that we've gotten official notice of? Uh, we received notification um, from IDOT um, as well for, for any of those, their projects. Right. So. Um, we return. We had to return money in one case, did we not? To not the state? For, not for any of our projects. No. Not for. For bike Public lane or something. Oh, that's the. Uh, Madam Chair, members of the committee, yes, the gigabit grant. Right, gigabit. Is the only thing we've had to, and we're still, we're still, and Ms. Storley's been handling that, but we're still going back and forth with the state. But we had the money in our possession. That is correct. And we had to send it back, just so people which, know. Which I don't believe we actually have done quite yet, because there's still mm -hmm. some issues regarding some outstanding bills that Northwestern University had. But, uh, but that's the only one that was actually taken away, or we had received mm -hmm. notice taken away. But as Director Robinson indicated. Things are changing on a daily basis now that there is no state budget. Uh, we'll keep you posted. But going back to Alderman Miller's original question, we feel comfortable with this reallocation to move this project, which you've already awarded, so that it can move forward. Can I have some other questions, if that's okay. Um, have we, this, this dredging of the boat ramp is for the boaters, is it not? It's for launching boats. Have we ever special assess the boaters for uh, capital improvements? Mr. Derniker wanted to answer that question. Outside of whatever fee. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, I realize they pay a nice fee. I, I don't believe we have done a special assessment per se. I think as Alderman Braithwaite was just uh, mentioning, though, there are fees associated with the use. Uh, some of that revenue uh, then comes for capital projects, but there's not been a special. Mr. Derniker is here. Can, can we do um, we do charge the boaters for launching and for parking, but I mean, with these special capital improvements, and this happens every year, doesn't it? Uh, Mr. Derniker is indicating that when this was first created, there was some special assessment done for the breakwater work that was done, but that was how many years ago, Bob? Over 30 years. Over 30 years. Yeah. Ago. Well, this, this is very specific to the boaters. I, I think we ought to. Uh, Alderman Rainey, I, yeah. I wanted to uh, correct one thing. This is not the dredging that we do every year. This is a larger project. Oh, okay. So this is not the our typical annual maintenance. This is um, repair and making major repairs to the the boat ramps themselves. So there's some some safety issues. And if you like, Stephanie, can you come and give a Stephanie? I know you're back. 
um, and she'll give you like a breakdown of all of the component pieces of, of the project. So this, we will still have to dredge every year as we normally do, and that's addition that and, was a, a little and an aside. Late. Yeah, a little yes. late to be dredging. Uh, good evening, um, good evening. Stephanie mm -hmm. Levine, uh, Senior Project Manager. Uh, the capital project that we're talking about doing at uh, the Church Street boat ramp is repair and extension of the actual concrete ramps, um, some corrective work to um, an, inter an interior pier, and some work on the south pier to the site. So it's infrastructure work. It's not maintenance operations. Well, the ramp certainly, I rarely run up and down that ramp. So, I mean, it's all for boats. That, right. that yes, ramp is, that is I, correct. I think we have a, huh? their fees are pretty decent. The boater fees, do we know what they are? I mean, there's one fee for residents and one fee for non-residents. But we could get a report on that. How's everybody doing this afternoon? Oh, we're great. <laughs> Joe McRae, uh, Deputy City Manager, Director of Parks and Community Services. I would just say that uh, it's also for city use as well. So the fire department uses it for their access. Our lifeguards use it for their access. We use it for aquatics camp. Um, of course, the boaters use it as well. We charge the boaters. We have about 100 boaters. We charge them uh, $175 this year, which is prorated from $250 um, in prior years because we shortened the season so that we could do uh, this reconstructive work. I want to appear this summer, and so, if right. possible. All right, I, I think so. going forward, we ought to give some thought to it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. we could. We don't have to charge them a hundred percent if we use fifty percent of it. But yeah. all right, just a thought. All right, mm -hmm. thank you very much. You got light in. A light. I have uh, Alderman Wilson. Just oh, oh go that's ahead. Alderman Braith. No, I just wanted to follow up on what you said with Mr. Craig. Is it possible to get a report that just shows exactly how those fees break down? In the number of boaters, I think you said 100, what, a buck 75 times 100 boaters? You have, uh, in a normal year, it's 250 that we charge okay. uh, the boaters for access to that boat ramp, and then you have about 100 boaters. But we can give you the hard Perfect. numbers. Yes. Thank you, sir. I can provide that. Thank you. All those in favor of recommending the boat ramp to the Council and in infrastructure improvements, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Um, let's see. A5. Okay. Um, Right. Resolution 66R15, authorizing an easement agreement with the Barn Investment LLC. This has to do with um, providing an easement through a parking lot that the city owns for the purpose of ADA accessibility to the new restaurant, which is going to co be called the Barn. Second. And the, the charge is going to be, I, I believe it's $400 a month, I mean a year, is that it? Any discussion? Congratulations to Amy. Yeah. Uh, oh, there, there she, she is. is. Congratulations. Uh, it, it's just great. Just want to say great. Oh, come tell us something. <laughs> tell us about the menu. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Alderman Rainey, thanks so much. Uh, thank you for approving the easement. We're very excited about doing a second project here in Evanston. I can't disclose the menu as yet because we want to make sure that it's all right before we say anything. Um, we're thrilled with the location. Um, as some know, it's a location I actually looked at for found um, and have been looking at it for many years now just thinking, gosh, what could we do with that empty space? Um, there's nothing like it in Evanston. We think it will just add to all the excitement and food and beverage that is going on and um, feel that it will be a proud addition and I thank you very much. Great, thank Can you. Can I tell very people where it is? So. Oh yes, so it is an old barn, it's an old stable. It is in between Church and Davis and Oak and Maple. It is in an alley. Mm -hmm. um, after researching I found that the building was actually built between, we're, we're not 100% sure what year yet, but between 1883 and 1897. It was built by the Borden Condensed Milk Company. It was the stable for their horse and buggy milk delivery service. And um, there was a shed that housed the milk. It was not a dairy. They didn't have cows there, but they did purchase the milk. 
and uh, where 27 Live is. Then in about 1910, they built that building, which then became the business. Um, the building has stood empty um, or simply as kind of a dumping ground for storage since the late 1920s. So um, it is a raw space. We've got plenty to do, though so, um, I'm very excited about it. So the, the, old, the address was rear uh, 1016 church. So all right. well, thank this you. This is fabulous. Thank you so much. Thank you, all the else? people. Anything thank else? you. And it says uh, winter of two, 2016, Amy? Yes. Yes, mm -hmm. okay. Okay, wow. wow, that's great. All right, next. Um, all those in favor of recommending the easement to the council say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, Matt is Brian. 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 Move approval of uh, A6, which is um, an extension of the electric franchise agreement with Commonwealth Edison until September 12, 2020. I must say that there's no fanfare here like there used to be. <laughs> Laura. Alderman Rainey, members of the committee, my name is Laura Biggs. I'm the superintendent of construction for utilities department. I, many of you are familiar with Jeff Batara, who used to be our ComEd representative. And he was highly successful in his career, was promoted. And we have a new ComEd representative, which I would like to introduce, Carlos Cavaleros, who will be our contact for when we have issues in the future. So. I'll be here. I'll pass them out. Great. So yeah, so um, thank you for consideration of the franchise. Uh, Jeff and I did the transition about, I don't know, seven days ago. So uh, we're still getting up to speed on whatever's, whatever projects, meeting staff and moving it along. And uh, we'll be okay. Well, I, I can tell you, and those of you who have lived here know, but having been on all the franchise committees, there, there is such a tremendous difference. I don't want you to get, you know, too excited, or I don't want to impress the company too much, but there, there used to be hours of outages on a regular, we were used to it. And now the, the complaint that we get is we had these six 30 second outages. Right. And I always tell people because Jeff was, a, Jeff and the fellow before him were Michael Radzovitz. Radowich. Radowitz. They always explained all the details of all the mechanics and everything. And that means the system's working when they go out. Those could have been three and four hour outages in the past. They've and, done a good job. Huh? Ex they've done a good job yeah. teaching it. That's exactly yeah. correct. And now they, it just, I guess it just flops over to the next line or the next whatever. Yep. It's a system working to protect, yeah. you know, the reliability. Right. That's really the best way of looking at it. It's, you can't view it as an annoyance. It's, it's, it's designed to work that way. So anyway, I, I see an in improvement. Um, so, Alderman Braithwaite. Uh, welcome, first of all, and thank you very much for getting back to me. So wherever Jeff is, if you can tell him I said congratulations, I'd appreciate it. Sure. Uh, so one of the things um, that I found out, I had a situation over the weekend with one of my residents that was having difficulty with, uh, with the power company, which was resolved. But Jeff mentioned to me that due to state uh, funding, a lot of our senior citizens who receive the LIHEAP fund that's supported by, is it PIP? Yep. Yes, sir. That, that this, after starting next month, that those, and I don't want to scare anyone, so I want you to correct me that those funds uh, may no longer be available moving forward until the state budget's approved. Right. Suspended is the word we've been using. Okay. I think as the city managers was explaining, is as until a state budget is passed, there's yeah. a lot of finance in flux. So, are those seniors being notified through the CETA or? The Through various means, we, we have, I mean, we're getting updates on a daily basis as well. The care center, our, our call center is what we refer to it as, uh, is in the process. We know who those customers are. There's numerous communications, so they're aware of Could we have our 311 center get some that information on that? To, that's yeah. what I was going to ask. I asked oh, Jeff sure, to do get, the same absolutely. thing. Absolutely. I'll get, uh, I'll circle back and get it to the right staff person. CETA has an automatic reply on their email. Until the budget's passed, that they. <laughs> I, well, 
I, I, I'll take the words right out of your mouth. You always remind us that seniors don't always have access to emails. So I, I just said want three one. Oh yeah, no, no. I think that that's. Yeah. However that we do it, I just think it's important that we do it. Anybody else? All right, you're off to a good start. <laughs> Nobody's <laughs> complaining. <laughs> Thank you very much. All those in favor of recommending the five-year extension of the franchise, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, next item uh, is Alderman Grover. Madam Chair, I move A7, which is ordinance 10015, the hundredth ordinance of the year, amending the Public Safety Civil Service Commission rules. Okay. Second. And this is sort of a confirmation of what the real rules are and housekeeping, et cetera? A little bit of everything, and it makes it uh, pretty much the same for both fire and police. Right, right. All righty. All those in favor of recommending approval to the council or introduction, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Alderman Holmes. Ordinance 85-0-15, amending city code section 3-4-6J to allow for the retail sale of 22-ounce containers for off-site consumption. Um, move approval. Okay. Um, I have a speaker, Michael Smiley. There you are. Come tell us a few things about craft brewing. Uh, good evening, Madam Chair, members of the committee. Um, Basically, this just uh, allows our restaurant, uh, Smiley Brothers Brewing Company, to provide um, containers that are already being used uh, with other licenses uh, to use 32-ounce um, uh, resealable containers as well as 22-ounce capped containers for off-site consumption. Um, so we're, uh, we're just looking forward to being able to expand the options that we offer people and uh, keep up with the uh, other uh, businesses in Evanston that are doing the same. So. Okay. Um, Michael, one thing I would like to know is I, I remember you're speaking about um, starting to can beer at some point. How will how will will we have to do another license for canned beer? <laughs> well, I, I think uh, we would we would be applying for a different license for that. It would be the uh, production brewery, uh, which already allows for uh, package uh, production. Um, but that's uh, if we are to move forward with our planned uh, production that we're looking forward to working with the city on uh, at the recycling center. How to how to do can I don't know that'll be interesting. All right. Um, any questions for Mr. Smiley? No. No. All right. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. Okay. All right. All those in favor of recommending the 22 ounce container license to the council say it's for introduction. Say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Um, now we're moving on here to uh, Ordinance 86015, decreasing uh, Class C for Horizon Group Management doing business as the Marion at 1611 uh, Chicago Avenue because they no longer operate the Marion. Okay. And so they're, based on our past practice, there's no objection to suspending the rules and moving for action on this, correct? Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any aye. opposed? A-10? Sure. Yeah. Together. Uh, A-10 ordinance 87-0-15, increasing the number of Class C liquor license for HRJ Realty Management, uh, DBA, the Marion at 1611 Chicago Avenue. Also for introduction. Move approval. I mean, second. <laughs> I'm reading the next one. All right. Um, any no discussion? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. If we were acting in one night to decrease the number of licenses, um, will they have a lag time then before Marion gets their license that we're looking to approve? Well, but they're no longer operating it, so they better not be selling liquor they and yeah. The number and then they want to increase. I know. But it's a different company. It's a different company. Yeah. I think. I just wondering, does this interrupt service? I, I doubt it. If, is there anybody here from the Marion? Ah. Here comes the answer. And not coordinating the. I get it. I get it. Alderman Rainey, I'm David Sherman, the Director of Operations from yes, the Marion. Hi. Hi. Uh, what we're looking for is a change. The, the, the transfer has been made between father and son of the, of the partnership. So we're looking, obviously, to continue operation. 
think we'll suspend the rules on the second license too. Is that good? Is yeah, that either good? that or uh, just so that so that we're doing the, the same line. thing for discontinuing and issuing a new license. But the other so entity isn't a legal operator. <clears throat> the sun is, right? Correct. Okay. So I think we should do it all. Suspend for the yeah. issuance of the new license. So we'll, we'll make sure you're not without a license. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Um, Mr. Lewis, thank you. Thank you. And just remind people what it's like doing business here. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, so all those in, any, do you want to discuss this any further, Alderman Grover? No? All right. Is everybody okay with this? This is just an A9. Right. So, um, Eight, nine, and 10. We're going to, um, that is, that's 10 is what we're doing. That was, the Introduction right. and suspension of the rules so that we can take action tonight on the second. Okay? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Move approval of item A11, which is increasing the number of Class D liquor license for Janko Hospita Hospitality, which is doing business as the Hyatt House at 1515 Chicago Avenue. Second. Um, I feel obligated to um, mention a concern I was given tonight, and that is why, and our mayor isn't here, so she can't answer it, why we are we're considering a liquor license for a location where the building isn't even built. You know why? <laughs> Hopefully I can shed some light. Or you uh, can at least argue why. Okay, okay. good evening. Uh, my name is John Brook. I'm the Chief Operating Officer for Janko Hospitality. And uh, because of the timing of getting liquor licenses, A, through the city and then through the state, uh, we just want to make sure that by the time that the hotel opens up, we are we have satisfied all the requirements for the brand Hyatt. And when is that going to be? We are shooting for uh, first quarter of 2016. We are contributing to the coffers without taxing the 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 residents. Well, you got a point there. What about what about the whole issue with? Um, the, uh, Bassett the Bassett training, etc. I, I am Bassett trained myself. Uh, my general manager, who uh, just joined us today, uh, has been the general manager of the Lombard Hyatt Place uh, for the last three months, and for the last 16 years has worked for Hyatt Corporation in their manage in for their managed hotels division. Um, the general manager, the AGM. The front office assistant general manager, the front office manager will all be Bassett trained along with these individual servers uh, to be in compliance with uh, Evans, Evanston's ordinances. Okay. Um, well, I think we'll, I think we'll probably have a little discussion with our mayor also, but we'll, if nobody objects, we'll just send this on to Alderman Grover. Well, I did. No need to suspend. No, I'm not asking. For, I'm not asking for suspension. No, no, at this we're point. not going to do that. But <laughs> the issue came up: Why are we issuing a license when there's no restaurant or bar? You know? and, and the primary reason is to be in compliance with the Hyatt brand standards of all the items that have to be in place prior to opening. And, and I did ask Director Farrar, and this is part of the business plan, so that makes it, you know, where why they come and request it early. All right, so we're going to uh, move introduction tonight. Thank you. Thank you. All right, all those in favor of introducing this to the council, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Thank you. This uh, one's me, Madam Chair. Yes, ma'am. A twelve ordinance eighty nine oh fifteen, increasing the number of Class D liquor licenses for the Turpin Group doing business as La Principale, at seven hundred Main Street. Second. The group that owns Lucky Platter. Lucky Platter, yeah. Um, anybody from Lucky Platter want to speak? Are they here? No? No. Okay. I thought I saw them. No. Well, it's a good thing. Last time I was at Lucky Platter, the wait was like 40 minutes. <laughs> so, so it's a good thing. Any, just, any comments or any, anybody in the audience want to speak? No. All those in favor of recommending introduction to the council, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Um, 813. 
uh, Ordinance 90-0-15, increasing the number of Class D liquor licenses in four. VPC, uh, Evanston Pizza, LLC, doing business at Gin Giordano's of Evanston at 1527 Chicago Avenue. And they're requesting suspension of the rules. Okay. Second. All right. Anybody from Giordano's here who wants to? Hi. Good evening. Zubin Kamula on behalf of Giordano's. Okay. And the reason you want suspension of the rules is? We'd just like to be able to open as soon as possible. Okay. Are you all ready? Pretty close. Yeah. Okay. Pretty close. Good. All right. Good luck. Thank you. Right. Anything? Would you like to move that we also suspend the rules? Yes. Okay. All those in favor of recommending introduction and suspension to the council, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. Next is um, Ordinance 91015, increasing the number of Class D licenses for 800 Evanston LLC, doing business as 800 Degrees Pizzeria, 812 Church Street. This is to increase licenses, D licenses from 51 to 52. Second. Any discussion? Anybody here from that business? You're here though. <laughs> Zubin Kamula again on behalf of uh, 800 Degrees Pizzeria. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. We'll work on this one. All right. All those in favor of introducing, say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Um, next, we have A15. A15. Uh, Madam Chair, I'd like to move for an adoption in Ordinance 95 0 15, decreasing the number of Class C1 liquor licenses from Cheesy's Evanston LLC DBA Cheesy's Pub and Grill, located at 622 Davis Street. Okay. Um, second that. Do you want to do the next one? Sure. And then uh, I'd also like to move for an adduction uh, item A16, ordinance 96-0-15, increasing the number of Class C liquor licenses for Cheesy's Evanston LLC. It's been seconded. Um, Is anyone here? Mr. Farrar, could you, I, I, can anybody tell me before we have him on, what the difference is between a C and a C1? I, I couldn't quite get it. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I have seen that. I I I'm looking at the uh, application it. here. I read it. It looked the same. I believe they were beer and wine only, and they wanted to go to alcoholic liquor, which is obviously a different license class. But oh, I'm yeah. just trying to pull up the. They were looking to downgrade the license. I know. Yeah, I think there may be. C1 hotel. C1 is what they have, but they're downgrading to C. And it said alcoholic liquors, and I, I just yes. look. I, I'm looking at the transmittal memo. There may be a. Uh, hmm. Yeah, let me check into that. Um, I'm, I'm cross-referencing it with the code section. Well, there's a whole difference in the cost, that's for sure. Yeah, let and me, in the license perhaps, cost. perhaps if we pull it from consent, I'll look at it and give the, uh, get the full, full background on that. Uh, we'll move to introduce, um, in both cases, and then not not uh, put it on the consent agenda so we can get the details, okay? All those in favor of doing just that, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, next item. Uh, a discussion on uh, cannabis tax and the allocation of those dollars in our budget. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I actually asked for this to be put on the item. Uh, there's some additional information that I would like to present to the members of this committee before we have the discussion, so I'd like to hold it. Oh, okay. Thank right. you. Anybody have any other comments or communications? Hearing none, all those in favor of uh, adjourning? Move to adjourn. Thank you.